Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and I'm so glad that you're here with me today. Today we are discussing some plant boundaries and ways that I have made owning plants for a long time manageable because I think at the beginning of our plant journeys, it's very easy to dive head first and buy every plant we see at every opportunity possible. And that is not something that can last for a very long time. It's not a sustainable practice, I guess in the sustainability field, but also just financially. And I don't know, how long can you enjoy something if you are like obsessively buying, 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 buying? and then experiencing the disappointment of killing everything that you've just bought. I feel like a lot of people start and stop houseplants because they've entered that cycle and don't know how to exit it without completely leaving houseplants behind. So I want to help you own houseplants for a long period of time in a way that is sustainable both mentally, financially, and environmentally. And these are my tips on how to do it and how I have been able to do that for myself. Okay, so the first thing that I implemented when I realized that my houseplant collection was getting a little bit out of hand, I realized that anytime I would see a plant that I liked, I would just buy it immediately. I had really poor impulse control, which is very common if you are new to houseplants. I mean, you see something pretty and you wanna bring it home right away. So the first thing that I did or that I noticed that I did, because this wasn't exactly something that I sat down one day and decided I was going to make changes in. I just sort of happened over a long period of time. But the first thing I did was I stopped buying plants right away and I sort of forced myself to take time away from that plant, from the situation and assess whether or not I really do want this plant. And so that can be a little bit hard when you are, let's say traveling or you've made the trek out to your local garden center and you want to come home with something. But I think Doing that every once in a while is not a big deal. Like if you have open spaces in your collection, it's really not that big of a deal to like randomly come home with the plant unannounced and unplanned. But if you're doing that every single time you go to the garden center or every single time you even leave the house, that's when it becomes an issue. So what I would do is I would take a photo of the plant, make sure that I know what it's called, or if I had heard about this plant before, now I've seen it in person, I can decide do I like this or not. And then I would walk away. A lot of the time I would walk away, sometimes I wouldn't, but a lot of the time I walked away because this helped me to number one, realize that this plant is not the singular plant of this kind that exists in the world or even in my city or my local vicinity. This plant will be available again, if not next time, the next time after that or the next time after that, or I can order it online if I'm still thinking about it and I can't find it locally. If there is a plant that you're looking for, I'm sure that you could tell the nursery, hey, you've had this plant before, I was looking for it, I just didn't see it wondered if you might have that on a reorder coming up soon. So anyway, there haven't been a lot of situations where I've even had to do all of that because oftentimes nurseries will restock plants that sell really fast because of course that's how stores work. So that was something that I started doing a couple of years ago and it really, really changed my impulse control because a lot of the time I would forget about the plant or I just wouldn't really care. Like a lot of the time I was just curious about seeing it in person more than I wanted to buy it because there are a lot of plants that I will see at the nursery and I really like them and enjoy them, but it's not something that I'm going to bring home. So it's nice to distinguish between plants that are fun to visit and plants that are fun to have in your own home. The next tip I have for having plants for a long time and plant boundaries, etc., is to not put yourself in plants situations that make you uncomfortable. And this is to say that there's going to be situations where you might connect with somebody online via Instagram or Reddit or Facebook or whatever it may be. And they might give you a little bit of a weird feeling. And it's like deep down, like intuitively, you're like, hmm, something's a little off, but they have a plant that you're really wanting and you have a plant that they're really wanting and it seems like the trade is going to line up really well or maybe the trade hasn't lined up very well and you're sort of just like feeling bad and feeling like you should just do the trade anyway because you've already told them that you would. So I have been in situations like this before where I just like didn't feel comfortable for whatever reason. There wasn't, and actually a lot of the time there isn't even a very specific reason for me feeling uncomfortable. 
I just got a weird gut feeling and I still went through with the trade or the sale or whatever it was. And it turns out later that the person was not a safe person to be giving my address to and um, I should have listened to my intuition. So definitely make sure that you are listening to your intuition and your body before you are worrying about how this might affect the other person or how it might make them feel if you pull out of the trade. I mean, there's lots of people who are going to be willing to trade houseplants. You are not the only person who will ever, ever trade with this person. Like they could definitely find somebody else to trade with if they really wanted to. And your comfort is definitely number one in these situations because trading is a really great way to get into houseplants and to get plants for free basically. But at what expense? You know, if you're really uncomfortable and you go through with it anyway, that plant is going to have like an icky feeling surrounding it, probably for the duration that you have it. I mean, that has happened to me before as well. Like the plant just feels weird to have because I felt uncomfortable with the trade or whoever I got it from. So definitely don't forget to listen to your intuition. That is probably like the biggest tip that I can give just for life in general. Like if a situation feels weird, then it probably is and you should just get out. So it's the same with trading houseplants and just houseplant interactions in general. We'd like to say that plant people are always really good people but that's not always the case. There definitely are people who infiltrate the community and gain trust and make people think that they are not scammers or con artists. I don't know what else to call them, but, and then they, you get burned and it really sucks because sometimes it can be quite a lot of money or quite a lot of value in plants. The next tip I have for long-term plant care and plant boundaries is to follow creators who are loving the collection that they currently have. And I have to say, I'm not calling out any specific creators here. I honestly don't watch a ton of plant YouTube anymore because I like watching videos about other things. My entire job is surrounding making videos about houseplants. So um, in my spare time, I don't tend to want to <laughs> continue working so I watch a lot of lifestyle content and like DIY content but when I did used to watch houseplant content a lot more there were definitely creators out there who focused their energy on haul videos shopping videos and not just shopping videos but like buying and like hauling and all of these things there's nothing wrong with going to stores and showing what stores have it's actually very helpful but what I'm referring to is when there's like you know, a haul every week and then you never see those plants again. There's no update again. And for whatever reason, like the, the creator could have many reasons for doing that kind of thing. But number one, haul videos perform very well. So there is a lot of incentive to doing them as a creator. So I understand why creators get in the um, habit of making a lot of them. But in that process, if you're consuming that content a lot, then you are constantly thinking about what plant you can get next and where and how much, and you stop focusing on the plants that you currently have. And it is, yeah, the, the hobby becomes more about acquisition and less about enjoying and living with the plants and taking care of them. And I think it also can foster an environment where you are like never satisfied with your collection because you don't have XYZ plant. And I think that's a really dangerous, slippery slope. I remember in 2019, going into 2020, I made a video talking about how I really wanted to focus more on the collection that I currently had. And I wanted to do a lot less online shopping, whatever. And then 2020 happened and well, I wasn't doing that much plant buying anyway because we really couldn't go out. Online plant shopping wasn't as big of a part of my life in 2020. And even now, like I hardly ever haul plants or you know buy plants because I feel very satisfied with my collection. And if I do buy plants, they're for a very specific space in my home or for a very specific purpose. Like, oh, I visited this city and I had a really great time and I visited this plant shop and I wanna bring home a souvenir and I have a place for it in my home. <laughs> so that is really the difference in um, haul content versus like appreciating your plants that you currently have. Again, there's nothing wrong with making hauls. I definitely do it. I love showing when I am buying things, but if you're in a state where you are constantly consuming haul videos and maybe the people that you watch don't really show their collection and it's only new plants that they're getting, I think that might be 
a little bit of a red flag and I really don't want to be the person like hating on other people's content but basically what I'm saying is if you want to feel more content in your content and put up boundaries where you're not going to be doing a lot of buying watch content that shows other people in that phase as well so the people that I follow are very much so in that phase I follow Fern, My Clean Leaves, Knock Dude those are mainly the people that I watch, Pam's Pretty Plants uh, a few others and those people really really focus their energies on just caring for the plants that they currently have and I find that really refreshing and it, and it also encourages me to focus on my plants and um, care for what I currently have. Okay so I mentioned this in the last point but the next point is to only buy plants when you know exactly where they're going to go in your home. This is something that I talked about in my book House Plants for Beginners. Just a little plug if you're interested in buying a signed copy I sell them on my website but basically what I said in the book is when you're writing to go plant shopping I want you to look around your house like stand up and look around <laughs> and see the places that a plant could possibly go so if you have an east window with a spot I want you to write that down on your phone and have that notated so that you know when you go to the store you're going to look for plants that will do well in an east window and if you need help deciding you know will this plant look at an east window how will it do you can just google that really quickly and like kind of find out what the lighting requirements of that plant are also i have like an entire guide in the back of my book of a bunch of different plants like i think over 100 plants plus their lighting requirements based off of that you can decide what sort of window the plant would do best in and also you can just ask the nursery owners like hey would this do well in an east window or a south window they'll probably know Know if you're comfortable going up and asking but it's really important that you know exactly where the plant is going to go before you buy the plant because that lessens your chances of just buying a plant just because and realizing you know oh I came home with this cactus that needs south windows and I only have north windows it really eliminates the possibility of that happening or like oh I don't have any grow lights to supplement this light that this cactus is gonna need so I can't bring it home so it just sort of limits your shopping and it gives you more of like a scope and I find that really nice because when you go to a plant store there's obviously so many options and when you have it narrowed down to okay I have it one spot in an east window and two spots in a west window you're only looking for three plants so with your scope narrowed it just helps your shopping be a little bit more efficient not that we really need to be efficient with plant shopping because it's enjoyable but it just makes it so that you're having to make less decisions so if you are a fellow um, decision fatigue queen I'm with you on that and that's a really great tip if you struggle to make decisions to just narrow it down so that you only have a few options anyway. My next tip for long-term plant care and enforcing boundaries around your plant acquisition is to focus first on your mental health and your plants second. So I get a lot of questions actually because I've been public about you know dealing with anxiety and depression and I get a lot of questions about how I sort of deal with that while I have houseplants because Houseplants are a lot like pets in a way, like you need to water them, you need to take care of them. Pets are a bit more needy than your houseplants will be, but basically it's something outside of yourself that you need to be taking care of, even if you are in a state where you are depressed or uh, frozen and you just want to like sit on the couch and exist. And so that can be a little hard when you have things that need you. And houseplants are definitely something that need us, but I will say that killing a plant is not the end of the world by any means. So what I say is you are way, 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 way more important than the Monsera Deliciosa that you bought at the local grocery store. So if watering your plants, if the thought of taking care of your plants is giving you anxiety, is making you feel bad about yourself or anything like that when you are in a state of depression or whatever it may be, I want you to just let that go because it's way more important that you are taken care of rather than your plants. Your plants will still be there when you come out of the fog and they'll be really happy to see you, but ultimately it's more important that you are taken care of. And honestly, I will say that sometimes it is nice to have plants when I am in a state like that because it sort of forces me to get up and take care of something. Obviously I have the dogs, but it's just different. Like caring for your plants takes longer and it's a little bit more of a mindless practice. And so it just, I don't know, it encourages me to get up and moving. But obviously if there's a time when I really don't feel like I can, I in myself have given myself permission to just not. And if a plant dies as a result of that, 
it's fine. It's not the end of the world. There are certain plants that I will make sure that they don't die even when I am in that state because they were very expensive. But, <laughs> you know, if it's between me and a pofos, I'm gonna choose myself. If it's between me and my Fetonia, I'm still gonna choose myself, you know? So if it ever does come to that point, definitely choose yourself over your plants. They will be okay and it's not worth the extra turmoil and brain power that you're going to have to use um, if you don't have it. So yeah, just focus on yourself first. Because also along with that, burnout is very common with hobbies. If you are a person who like goes all in on hobbies, burnout is very common. And my goal is to make you a long-term plant parent, not just a short-term plant parent. And there are going to be phases in your journey where you're really, really into plants and phases where you're like, take it or leave it. But the point is, is that you stick through it through all of those things and that you sort of find a baseline in all of it so that your obsession is not like up here and your hatred is down here or not hatred, but like boredom is down here. We want to find like an equilibrium where it's all neutral so that these plants exist to enhance our lives and make us happy, but they're not our entire lives and they are not the bane of our existence. So it's just nice finding an equilibrium where they add joy and um, green to our lives, but it's not taking over everything. You know what I mean? And that is hard when you're first getting into it and you're really excited, but I think implementing a lot of these tips will help you find that equilibrium a lot faster. Okay, the last thing that I wanna say here is don't rush to replace plants after they die. So I just talked about how if you allow a plant to pass away while you are taking care of yourself, that's totally fine. What I would say is take that loss and you know toss the plant, empty the pot, sanitize the pot, put it away uh, when you're ready and just wait. Because I think the natural inclination is to be like, oh, I have an empty pot, we need to fill it. <laughs> and I think that's really not a good thing to do because you're not taking the time to really understand why this plant died. If it died for a reason outside of like your control, like for example, if it had a pest infestation or all of a sudden like all the leaves started turning brown and things went downhill really fast. Those are situations where I think it's really important to stop and examine and try to figure out what happened before you immediately go out and buy something new and that old plant is like out of sight, out of mind, you never think about it again. Because plants, there's only a certain amount of things that can go wrong with a plant and you'll probably have repeat problems. If one plant died a certain way, you're gonna have others that will die the exact same way. So I think it's really important to examine that plant and figure out what happened, like, like a biopsy. <laughs> um, or what is it called? Um, yeah, I guess if I, I don't know. So I'm not clear, do I even need to say I'm not a doctor? Like obviously I'm not a physician anyway. <laughs> um, run your tests, figure out what happened and just take some time to reflect on that and figure out, you know, is this something that I could have prevented or did this just happen due to neglect? Did this happen due to a pest that I just like could not you know, overcome. I think it's important to ask yourself these questions and um, maybe I should do a video like questions to ask yourself after a plant has died or when a plant is dying or something like that. I think I might do that because I think that would be helpful to go through these steps to sort of troubleshoot what's going on and why and how you can prevent it in the future because you will save yourself a lot of money in the long run. So I haven't even really talked about like the finances of all of this besides at the very beginning, but Replacing plants as soon as they die is very expensive because plants, I mean, you guys, I don't even need to say this, but plants are not exactly cheap all the time. And depending on what your collection looks like, like if I was killing like my, um, my album Monstera and I just went out and got a new one without even thinking about what I did wrong, that is a massive waste of time, energy, and money. And so we need to very thoroughly check ourselves and the plants and figure out what we did and how we can be better for our current plants that we already have and to prevent this from happening again with others. That is a little bit of a big sis plant chat. I hope that you enjoyed hearing the process that I go through when I am deciding, you know, should I buy a plant or not? Uh, just my general boundaries surrounding house plants and how I've been able to collect them for so long. And I haven't even been collecting for that long, but I already know 
based off of my current collection and like how I'm feeling about my plants, that I am probably gonna have plants for the rest of my life. I cannot even imagine a home of mine without plants. I mean, am I always going to have a beautiful sunroom like this with plants like on every single wall and every single corner? Hopefully, <laughs> but if I don't, that's okay because I know that the love of plants resides in my heart and not necessarily in my wallet or in like my, I don't know, just like outside things. Like the love of plants resides in, in me. It is innate that I love plants. I always have, um, the women in my family have always been very planty people and so it feels like a deep connection to my family and to who I am at my core. And so I think finding a reason to love plants beyond, oh, I like how they look and I like how it feels to buy them. I think finding reasons to like plants beyond those two reasons is going to help you long-term because yeah, in times when I'm frustrated, I do think of the women in my family and I do think of like the relationships that I've made in the plant community and how I feel when I'm cultivating plants. Like I'm very emotional. I'm, I'm obviously, if you guys hadn't noticed, I'm very driven by emotions. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's really good to think about those things more than I think about how it feels to buy a plant. Cause that's just like a boost of serotonin that'll be gone and or dopamine or some one of those. Again, not a physician. So yeah, I think it's important to think about your personal connection with houseplants and put that above your connection with just buying things. Because yeah, I think that a lot of the time shopping addictions get kind of muddied in this world of houseplants. Like people buy a lot of plants and I do think that it is more related to a shopping addiction than and like poor impulse control than them really loving plants. And I, I've always been hesitant to say that because I know that addiction is like obviously a very serious thing, but I do feel like oftentimes it gets disguised because plants are a good thing. Plants are a fun thing to have in our homes, but uh, it can very easily not be that. It can, be, it can very easily become very unhealthy to just be constantly consuming uh, and not really taking care of things and have a constant turnover in your home um, of houseplants. So. Anyway, all this being said, I, I could really talk about this for a very long time. And if you you know wanna hear more about this topic, definitely let me know in the comments below. I can certainly do a chat <laughs> because I think it's really interesting. Um, but yeah, also, Bloom and Grow Radio has an episode. It's an older episode, but it's called Your Brain and Plants. And it's very interesting. Maria had on Christine from Work Hard, Plant Hard. I think that's who she had on. And they discussed like what happens when we buy plants in our brain, like what is is activated and all of these things and like why do we like why is it so easy to just like fall into a hole with houseplants um it's a really good episode it's super old i think it was like from 2019 or maybe even 2018 but i'll link it down below if i find it and it's really interesting so anyway if you liked this topic you'll probably like that one too so anyway thank you so much for watching this video and if you have anything to add what you do to help your long-term plant care i would love to hear from you in the comments down below because as i am saying this outro i'm thinking even more things in my head that i wish that i said but we have already been recording for like 27 minutes so i'm gonna let you go thank you so much for watching this video if you're not already make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so you never miss an upload and i will see you guys in the next video Bye.